Okay, welcome to uh, this part of the Access to Higher Education Fair. Um, I'm joined by uh, Ursula and Helen from Cambridge uh, Regional College. Um, if you just both like to introduce yourself as we start. Okay, so my name is Helen West and I'm currently the head of HE at Cambridge Regional College and I'm also the team leader for the Department of Engineering, Science and Access. And my name is Ursula Woodhouse and I'm um, a lecturer in business and marketing at Cambridge Region College and I also look after the access to higher education um, business pathway. Lovely, thank you very much. So I'm just going to go through a series of questions um, which I'll start now. So um, first of all, how do people apply for the access to HE diploma? Um, I'll take this one. Um, most, of our, um, most of our applicants um, come via the Cambridge Regional College website, but we also get people applying in person, particularly if they have any specific questions which they want to find answers to prior to their applications, um, questions around um, financial support or progression routes, or fee status, and, and all those can be clarified at the at the early pre-application um, uh, stage, and uh, that allows people to be absolutely certain that they want to apply for the um, access diploma. Lovely, thank you. And how do you support students to choose the correct course? So. Students will come to us um, perhaps via the internet. Um, so the college um, will um, pick up queries from students and they will come through usually to me or they might get passed on to course tutors. So we've got a series of help sheets uh, and the help sheets lay out the course content. It lays out the names of the units and it gives the students a really good idea of what each course um, entails. So it helps address sort of their basic queries like, you know, which course do they want to study in the first place and which campus do they want to study at? So then the students will be encouraged to put in an application. There's no obligation at that point, obviously. Um, and then this is followed up um, uh, to the student being sent a voiced over presentation. Um, so this is general aspects of the access course, what it's all about, going to university, etc. And then after that, we would also send them a booklet of general information about access and then they would be given um, a time and a date for an interview. Um, in my experience, I find that most applicants have chosen the diploma pathway by the time they apply, um, but few may attend two interviews because they may be uncertain um, which one to choose. Uh, so if applicants uh, have chosen uh, two courses, they would have an opportunity to meet members of both teams, both teaching teams. So, for example, humanities and, and business. And during the interview, they would be told um, which units uh, each program uh, consists of and also um, what progression pathways are available to them after completion of those pathways. That normally is very useful for applicants to decide um, uh, which which pathway to choose, and then um, once they've attended both interviews, they they are likely to be confident in, in choosing one or the other. So, what do students need to supply as part of their application to the access to HE diploma? Okay, so the students would apply online um, and they complete a very basic application form. We use an online system called Prospects. They can upload as well any qualifications that they have. So if they have scanned in copies of their GCSE or functional skills, English and math certificates, they can be uploaded. Um, what would be really helpful is if they also upload a short summary of why they've chosen this course, why they want to study it, perhaps where they're hoping to progress to. And then any references that can be supplied, whether it's a character reference or maybe an academic reference, they can also be uploaded there and they're usually uploaded by admissions. So it's a very straightforward process. Lovely, thank you. Um, so does the college have any prerequisites or entry requirements for the access to HE diploma? 
Um, so uh, we normally recommend um, the GCSC um, grade C or four in English and maths, but we also understand that not every applicant is likely to hold exactly this specific qualification. So there might be some equivalents and um, equivalent qualifications, um, such as, um, for example, uh, ESOL skills for life level one, uh, for uh, speakers of um, other languages or for our international students um, or our international students we need to demonstrate um, that they are able to um, sort of communicate in English and uh, IELTS um, exam uh, with a grade of 5.5 um, would perhaps be, um, would give us that kind of reassurance. Um, Alternatively, alternatively uh, we would also ask for evidence of kind of secondary um, education in um, in their home countries or from their home countries, um, or help uh, um, students or help applicants uh, with um, any kind of uh, with understanding their qualifications um, by using uh, uh, the the NAREC system. Um, if for whatever reason uh, applicants have no uh, evidence of maths and English, uh, we would be able to um, set them a very short assessment uh, just to kind of establish where they are and how we can support them um, once they come on to the, uh, the Access to HE Diploma. Lovely. Um, we've, we've lost Helen a couple of times oh. there. I'm not sure what's, what's <laughs> happening. Is it a bit, bit Freudian on, on her part? Yeah. <laughs> no, she's back now. So let me just um, let me just um, carry on from what Ursula has been saying. So there's a lot of um, uh, academic writing on all of the pathways, even the science pathway. So those underpinning English skills are really, really important. Um, obviously, we want students to achieve as uh, good a grade as possible. So it's important that they come in with really um, strong English uh, qualifications where possible. There are other considerations as well about entry requirements. So, for example, if you want to study midwifery at university, a lot of universities now are asking for GCSE in English, maths and a science. So it's really, really important that um, any prospective student does a lot of research into the quali uh, qualifications that are needed in addition to their access diploma. Lovely. Thank you. Um, so that leads me on to my next question because this might be part of it. Uh, do students need to attend an interview? Absolutely, yes. Um, for a very simple reason that uh, all sort of, uh, students uh, or applicants to for, for a place on the access course are not the same. So it's very important that they have an opportunity to, to talk to the teaching team um, about any kind of specific questions that they might have and also be assessed fairly uh, on the basis of um, the, the evidence presented, not just through their application, but also during the, the interview. So um, um, at the moment, all the interviews are over uh, the telephone, but we are planning to revert to um, face to face interviews as long um, as soon as it is safe to do so. So how do you support students before they begin their access to HE diploma? OK, so prior to interview um, and also after they've been interviewed and possibly accepted, students can access um, one of our virtual learning pages, which are attached to our website. And this carries a lot of information that they will find useful prior to the start of the course. So examples would be what they're going to do on their taster days, their actual course timetables, any open day information that we get on any university. We, we get a lot of information come through universities and we post all of that up. If students want to go online, for example, and go to visit an open day. Um, and also how to get started to writing their personal statement. Obviously, that's going to be a very critical aspect uh, at the start of their programme. We would like their UCAS and their personal statements to be finalised by the end of November. So it's quite sort of hit the ground running when they when they start the course. So as much reading as they can do and research into their chosen universities prior to coming on the course, we find is really, really useful. And it acts as a good springboard and it is really motivational 
uh, for them. They can always email myself or any course tutors with any queries um, prior to starting if they're worried about anything at all, because we don't want them to sort of hang on to these worries over the summer and then just think that they're not going to be able to survive access because people do survive it and they do really well. So we want to take out all of those initial concerns. Fantastic. And now on to my final question for you. Uh, what kind of ongoing support uh, once the student starts is available um, for the Access to HE diploma? OK, so during the interview, it's a good opportunity for students to um, disclose any difficulties that they've had in any prior education. Um, so, for example, if they've had extra time in exams, if they're dyslexic, for example, we can make sure that an initial assessment is set up for them. Um, and then hopefully then the support will be in place. It is quite unusual that um, they would have support with them in the classroom, um, but there may well be additional support available um, outside um, of the lessons. Um, so there's um, other support available if students have difficulty organising their time, organising structure for essays and that kind of thing. We have progression coaches, we have welfare and counselling support as well, should they need it throughout the, the duration of their programme. So each tutor, oh, sorry, each student will have a personal tutor and they have um, a one-to-one -one with that tutor roughly about every six weeks, uh, maybe less than that. Most courses are taught by at least two academic members who also offer lots of support and help with um, subject related matters. And then for anyone taking English or maths qualifications alongside, um, lecturers set very, very specific targets to help with those sort of broader skill developments throughout. So there's lots and lots of um, specific support available for students. And I think that's one of the main aspects that students feed back to us at the end of the year, the exemplary level of support um, that are, that's given um, from the college in general, really, but mainly the, the tutors and the subject lecturers who really sort of work above and beyond really to help um, students that have returned to education. Fantastic. And that's exactly as um, Helen said, uh, there is um, obviously academic but also pastoral support um, provided for um, all students. So the academic support would be tutors and personal tutors, um, as explained, but also um, our um, students who, uh, for whom English is, is a, their second language would have um, sort of extra support uh, provided by an experienced teacher uh, who understands, who, who teaches English um, to students with, a, with, with English as a second language. Uh, we also offer um, maths workshops, so this is a, um, an opportunity for students to sort of bring in a kind of queries and, and questions uh, in addition to their normal uh, um, uh, mathematics classes. Um, Obviously, there is um, there are other qualifications on offer, such as GCSE and functional skills, to ensure that students are working at the right level uh, of uh, of maths and English, and are also able to progress because most universities now would be asking for um, GCSE and Grade Four or C in both English and maths. And then finally, um, the the peer support on access courses is absolutely amazing, and that is something that is really worth mentioning because most um, access groups form very close um, sort of communities and powerful learning communities, and that is really something that helps students uh, not just get through the course but get through with with really good grades and achieve. The, the, the goals that they set themselves um, at the start of the course. Brilliant. Yeah, and, you know, I've spoken to a few uh, students or ex-students throughout this week and um, what you've just said there about the community um, of learners and also teachers, um, it, that's run true with everything that they've said. Um, so it's really good to hear that that support is there. Uh, so thank you very much, both of you. Um, it's been a real pleasure to speak with you. And um, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, much Sam. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.
Okay, thank you for joining me, Lily. Um, we've got a few questions for you, um, just to uh, talk to students, that, well, people who might be thinking of being access to HE at diploma students in future. Um, but first of all, if you could just introduce yourself, what course you're doing, what access to HE diploma you did, um, take it away. Yeah, I'm Lily. I'm currently in, I've just finished my first year actually of a BA in writing and English literature at Anglia Ruskin University. And I did an access course in humanities and social sciences at CRC. Lovely. Thank you very much. And um, so, first of all, what motivated you to actually do the Access to HE diploma? I'd had, I always knew I wanted to go to university. I'd had a couple attempts at doing other level threes. I had gone to sixth form and it completely wasn't for me and I had dropped out. I had tried doing remote study by myself and found it really, really difficult. And then I think I'm, I managed to research it and I came across it and I thought, yep, this will get me to where I want to go. Brilliant. That's great. And um, what did you enjoy the most about your access to HE diploma? Um, I think how much I grew and changed as a person mm. because I I think it just it, it gave me so much confidence. I became uh, I was our course rep. So I took part in various stuff. I was, you know, I, you know, you develop so many skills of public speaking and of, I mean, I don't want to say sort of interacting with other people because that makes me sound like complete shut in, but it's just being in an academic environment like that, where you're surrounded by other adults is just a really wonderful environment to be in and you will grow and change as a person so much that's great thank you so much um so i want to ask another question it's not one of the ones that i've already prepped you with so apologies no um but so just thinking back to, thinking back to the access to he diploma um what kind of subjects did you um actually learn about and did you have a favorite subject that you looked into we did history sociology and english literature um i probably it's odd to say that i enjoyed the two subjects the most that i've chosen not to study at university because with sociology and history you learn so much in such a short space of time and my tutors were fantastic and I honestly found it really fascinating of what we were looking at we looked at um you know the history in the UK of getting the right to vote and the development of that and how all that started out and that was something that I knew almost nothing about so that was brilliant to learn all of that and then we looked at uh, Russian history and the Russian Revolution and that was really really fun as well and then with sociology it's all the different things of that you look at of that like sociology is such a broad subject that there's so much you can cover so yes yeah, so I really enjoyed both of those actually that's great yeah it's that uh, giving you the, the the tools that you need through those it gives you subjects. such a broad knowledge base that you really once you've done the access course you really feel oh actually there are so many things that I hadn't thought about that I would be completely capable of tackling academically, which is yeah. just wonderful to be in that position. Fantastic. Lovely. Um, so what are your plans? Uh, I know that's a big question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to put you on the spot, but yeah, once you've finished your degree, um, what plans do you have? I think I would obviously finish the degree get as good a grade as possible I've been thinking of doing a uh, further qualification in something such as librarianship mm. um one thing that I got from you know my access course is how much I enjoyed that kind of supportive environment and I don't know if I'd want to go directly into teaching but to go in something where you're working in an environment like that at a further education college I think it'd be really brilliant. So that's what I've been thinking about quite a lot. That that would be very rewarding, I, I, I could imagine. It is. Um, I, I think it'd just be, you know, I mean, this is, I've really loved doing today, just sitting here and listening to everyone because it reminded me of how 
fantastic my access course was and how much fun it was so yeah fantastic lovely thank you and um what advice would you give to someone who might be watching this who's thinking about doing an access to he diploma but they're just not quite sure maybe they're worried about certain things what advice would you give them I would say go for it just a hundred percent because it you know I mean I know from my background of what I've had you know of being I'm a I'm a carer for a family member and various family responsibilities but you will amaze yourself at how much you can do and how much you can juggle it and the big difference with being at a further education college is that they understand that you are an adult and you have a life outside of coming into education but they are so supportive they're really supportive places that they they don't make it easy but they make it manageable mm -hmm. and that you will surprise yourself by how much you can tackle and how much you can juggle things and how much you can fit in yeah and and you know it, a lot of the students that do tend to do access to HE deployments, mm. you know, they come from caring backgrounds or other responsibilities in families, as you said. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it, it is tough. Um, yeah. But, but it's it, so yeah. worth it at the exactly. end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And, and we understand. We regret doing it. Yeah, exactly. And colleges understand that people mm. have lives and things going on. It's and they're completely... There different environment to being a sixth form or to being a you know a, a secondary school or anything like that it's just you are an adult and you are treated like one yeah brilliant lovely um if you had to uh summarize your experience of the access to he diploma in just one word what would it be it would have to be brilliant i had such a fun time i made such good friends you know i i grew so much as a person i learned so much i learned so much not just academically but about myself it has it prepared me completely for university everything that a lot of other people struggle with at university like referencing mm -hmm. it's so reassuring to know i've done this i've been taught how to do this you know it it's such a good foundation for I think even if you aren't even if you change your mind and you don't progress onto university it's a brilliant brilliant qualification for how much you will change and grow that's fantastic thank you very much Lily um it's been a pleasure to speak with you um and um I wish you the best in the rest of your degree thank and you. whatever comes next um, maybe I'll see you in a library uh, sometime <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's me again, Flora Fai, the Chief Exec at the Cambridge Access Validating Agency. I want to say a huge thank you to you for joining us for our Access to Higher Education Fair this week. I hope you found our bite-sized sessions useful and has inspired you to think about doing an Access to HE diploma yourself. And I'd say a massive thank you to all of our speakers and everyone who's joined us to share their experiences of the course. As we draw to a close, I thought it'd be useful to summarise what we've shared this week to help you with making your decision about next steps. So firstly, an access to higher education diploma. It's a life-changing level three qualification that's equivalent to A-levels that's been designed for adults looking to return to education. It's a great option for anyone who's looking to retrain start a new career or expand their knowledge in a specific subject area. It's a qualification that usually takes about a year to complete at a further education college, school, university or online providers. And they've been designed specifically to help you get the knowledge and skills you need to be able to progress into higher education, such as a higher national certificate, diploma or an undergraduate degree. It's a fantastic course that many students undertake nationally in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And it's one that you can undertake in a whole variety of subjects from animal management to business, to humanities, to nursing and science. The one thing all of those different courses have in common is the fact that it really gets you ready for that next step in your career. 
we've heard about the different funding options available across uh, the different nations of the UK that make sure that you have the finances available to be able to progress. We've heard from university partners about how much they respect access to HE students and welcome them on their course. So it really does get you to that next step. And finally, today we'll have heard from our FE providers on how you go about applying. So if you've been inspired this week on looking into an access to HE diploma, I highly recommend that you do a bit more research about what's available in your local area, what you want to go on to achieve with it, and to get applying. We would love to see you on a Kava course come September. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you soon.